What is going on everyone? So in this week's video, I wanna talk about matched print pairs. This is images that play very nicely when presented alongside each other. It could be in a book, it could be on a wall. And this is something that I first realized the significance of after my wife and I had renovated the inside of her house. And we had a wall where we wanted to hang two photos next to each other. And despite having a decent number of photos to choose from, we found it was really hard to find images that worked well in that situation because they have to kind of play off each other and they, if they get too matchy, it doesn't quite work. There has to be some degree of contrast. And ever since then, I've really enjoyed the process of finding images that pair very well. And this also was something that was a factor when in 2020, I came out with a book with Kozu Books and trying to find uh, ways of laying out the images in a way that things paired quite well. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to my computer. I'm gonna show you the process by which I find some of these match pairs. I'm gonna show you some of the pairs and tell you why I think those pairs work pretty well. And uh, perhaps there's something to be learned. So let's head on over to the computer. So the way that I find the pairs is really just by opening up two different browser windows of my website and just giving it a scroll. And it's a little bit like a slot machine in a way, where you just see all these different pairings. And to me, this is easier than making prints and shuffling them around. And what's interesting is like, for example, with this photo here and this photo here, uh, you'll see that the color works pretty well there. And there's kind of a warm and cool thing going, or there's a little bit of a connection there. Uh, then you go to one like this, where it's the same sort of theme, where you have some sand and leaves. And again, it's a similar color palette though it's not really, I would say, like a direct pairing sort of match, but I have something in mind for these two images in particular. And then here we also have some similarities in terms of some flowing motion and some pastel tones. But if we flip through these various photos and you just look at all these different pairings, it triggers something in the brain where you just create these connections. And it's not necessarily the similarities that are going to make a connection. It's what we're looking for is some degree of contrast between these images. Uh, these have a connection. They both have a bit of a cooler palette. You have a central feature here, a central feature here. This is a little bit bigger than that, which certainly helps. Um, this is in Zion, this is in Death Valley. Um, if they were both in the same place, it might have a little bit of a stronger connection. Uh, this one, just not a good match. That color doesn't really match well with this. The theme doesn't match. The color palette's similar though. Then you have some photos like this, which is a very dominant image. And because it is such a dominant image, this is one that's tough to pair with other photos. And I find that a dominant photo like this would need to be paired with a very calm, very soothing, kind of a randomized looking image. So something that doesn't also share a like a dominant feature. Um, if we have a photo such as, uh, let's say this right here, you can see that this is going to clash quite a bit because you have a you know features here in this lower corner. So it looks a bit contrived in the opposite colors. It just doesn't work uh, quite as well. Um, so that's definitely something to to factor into it. And you see by just scrolling through these various images, not a lot of them are gonna work well with this one. So that's one of the struggles when you have an image that is quite dominant. Uh, this image pairs well with a lot of images because you have a warm, cool color combination. And this is one of those randomized uh, sort of images. If we scroll through these guys here, you'll see that eventually we come across this image right here. And here, if we have two oak leaves, one in the middle and one offset, again, it looks, it just it stands out for the wrong reasons. But what I found is that if I were to move up to this one right here, now we're onto something. So I have these images opened in Photoshop right now because this is one of the pairs I've come up with. And when we look at these images side by side in Photoshop where they're a bit larger, there's a lot of similarities between them, yet there is enough contrast for them to make a good match. Now, this photo was taken in Zion National Park in Utah. This was taken in the White Mountains in California at pretty high altitude. So they're very different subjects, but there is there are some underlying themes between them, I think, that makes them a pretty good match. 
So if we look at the top of the images right up here, uh, you'll see that they both share these bands coming in. And when this one is on the left, this one's on the right, it creates a little bit of a interesting sort of effect like that. So we have alternating bands of color that are pretty similar in size, but take a look at this lower right corner. That's kind of the same thing, which is quite fascinating. Now, when I photographed this one, I didn't have this one in mind. It's just a matter of coming upon a scene, trying to find a composition for it, and then seeing this connection after the fact. Uh, there, are certain some, there are certainly some color combinations that are quite similar here, where we have these colors are gonna be about the same. And then we also have a bit of a warm and cool combination as well. And what I think is fascinating about these images is that here we have uh, this was at one point a sand dune that became stone. So you have all these various layers of the sand versus all the layers of the wood. And so I think, I think that makes for a very interesting combination. And this is one that I will likely be hanging on my own wall in my house because I, um, in our, our uh, dining room, we don't have anything, we don't have any photos on the wall right now. So I'm thinking maybe this pairing would work very well because they're not going to fight each other when they're on the wall next to each other. And not only that, you have it where they, they complement each other and you build a bit of a greater story between them. Now, one of the first significant matches I made was this pair right here. And again, we go to contrast. Contrast is why this match works. I photographed this one while on a backpacking trip in 2018. And then it was a year later, I photographed this on a winter trip in Zion. So they're both in Southern Utah. And it was what I was scanning in this photo that I thought back to this image, I opened them side by side and I was kind of blown away by what I saw. We have warm versus cool. We have curvy versus angular. Yet these images are all about this dominant line right here and here and also the textures contained within them. So even though this is stone, it has kind of a, like a velvety sort of appearance. And then we have all the little fine details of all the ice within this one right here. And so it is by playing on the contrast between these images that I think makes for a really good pair. You can imagine if we had like, let's say two variations of a similar photo, maybe like a zoomed in photo of a a tree during the winter time with snow on it versus a wider view of it. It gets to be a little bit matchy and I think that's what I'm trying to avoid. It's more so building upon that degree of contrast, that visual contrast of form, of shape, of color that I think makes for a really good match. And then another match right here. These were taken in uh, Death Valley within the same dune field but several days apart. I took these photos in 2022 and uh, both photos were taken at about the same time of day when the sun is just about halfway dipped back behind the mountains at sunset. And so you have this warm yet soft directional light. And what's also important is that these two photos are taken on the same film stock. They were both taken on Provia. And as a result, they have the same sort of color response. Uh, but here we have a dominant um, sort of a peach colored image versus this one is more about the shadow blue tones, but with peach accents and with blue accents there for the shadows. We also have a diagonal emphasis and I think those ones also pair very well. It's the contrast between them, the shadow and light, but with the same film and the same general conditions, though with different textures, I think makes for a good pair. And if we look at our previous pairs, these photos were both taken on Fuji Velvia 50, and these ones were taken on Fuji Velvia 50. So I find that when they're taken on the same film stock, it's gonna work well. And for those of you that shoot digital, it just basically means the processing of those images is gonna to have to be fairly similar to match similar contrast and color and such. Uh, now I have another set I'm going to load up here, which is actually four images. It'll take me a little while to open them, so I'll cut back to this in just a moment. Uh, but it's four images that work really well with each other. So I'm going to get those opened up right now. 
So this is a set of four images that has all kinds of interesting interconnection between them that makes them work really well as a whole. So first and foremost, we have some very dominant colors. We have some cool tones in this one, some kind of reddish tones, some yellows, some greens. It's kind of like the Teletubbies in a way. Um, but if you look at the elements within these, so we have this maple tree right here, which is dominantly yellow, but you'll notice that there's some green in there. And then we have this photo of some grass that has some yellow maple leaves in it. We move to this one right here, which has the strong reddish tone, yet we have the yellow and green leaves. And then this photo right here has some reddish tones in, the, in these leaves in here. And I really like the way that this bluish one ties in even though these feature mostly maple leaves and this is an oak leaf. Uh, um, I really like the patterns. So the patterns of this one right here certainly relate both to this one and to this one. You have this flowing pattern here, flowing pattern, flowing pattern, but also we have some blue tone here in some of the trunks of these trees. So these images to me give a very calm feeling. And when presented as a whole, it just, they play off each other in different ways. If you had, let's say, enough space to hang three photos by them you know, as a group and then one photo by themselves, you can find all different sort of pairings within this group. And I think what this has in common is that these photos are not especially bold in their own right. They're all about color, they're all about texture, they're all about the form within them. Um, usually some degree of diagonal, diagonal motion between them that makes them work very well in the setting. And since these were taken on Provia, uh, the color is also quite similar. The contrast, um, the response to the color, and the very similar light that they're taken in. So for me, that's also a very significant factor for creating a set like this. So it's something I would encourage you to do, to go through your photos, see if you find any pairs, uh, things that... Um, that make them display well, but it really does come down to contrast. So you have to have enough similarity for them to relate to each other. You want to create a greater story by presenting those images as a whole, but ultimately it comes down to having some degree of contrast between them that makes them work in that way. And also worth mentioning, I found that by having pairs like this listed on my website, I think it does help in terms of print sales because if a person has space to, let's say, hang two pictures on a wall, if you find that there's a pair where you know that those images are going to work really well, I think it takes, um, takes some of the difficult choices away, or it, I should say it makes the choice easier um, by taking away the difficulty of making that choice. But hopefully this was of interest to you. I want to thank Evan for watching, and we'll see you around next time.